Everybody has heard of black holes. No one has really seen them. The spacecraft of our dreams has reached not a solid object, but the boundary to a region of space where gravity has gone mad. Waiting below is a black hole in space. This is where a mighty star has died and left a bottomless pit from which there is no escape. Welcome to the edge of the universe and to the end of space and time. Phil Charles not only dreams black holes, he hunts them down for a living. He's found the strongest evidence yet for a black hole lurking in our own galactic backyard. Searching for these things is the most wonderful way of going to the frontiers of modern physics. The most exciting thing that the, the modern scientist can do. By day, Phil Charles lectures on astrophysical theory at Oxford University. By night, he is at the forefront of the hunt for astrophysical facts. To be a successful black hole hunter, you have to have ready access to the largest ground-based telescopes. We have to go all over the world to La Palma and Hawaii in the Northern Hemisphere, to South Africa, Chile, and Australia in the Southern Hemisphere. Around the globe, Phil Charles and his fellow astronomers call upon the world's most sophisticated astronomical arsenal to probe the depths of space for these mystery objects. From X-ray satellites and the Hubble Space Telescope in orbit, to the finest radio and optical telescopes on the ground. If you imagine you have a black hole and material is falling into it. Only in the 1990s has mainstream science come to a consensus that black holes might actually exist. Gravitational collapse. Theory tells us that deep inside black holes, everything we know about the universe will come to an end. I was concerned about whether this would ever have any relevance to the real universe. Astronomers must hunt not for black holes themselves, but for the effects they generate in space around them. Phil Charles looks for visible stars that black holes might have trapped in orbit. But even they can be hard to find. When you are looking for a needle in a haystack, uh, we need a needle to shout out and say we're here. That we do through the fact that in the late 1980s, the Japanese launched an X-ray satellite called Dingo, which had what we call an all-sky monitor on it for detecting X-rays from anywhere in the sky. It's the X-rays that alert us to the presence of this needle, the needle in the haystack that we're searching for. While sweeping the heavens in 1989, the Ginga satellite reported a mysterious burst of X-rays in our own galactic neighborhood. The source of the radiation is an invisible object 3,000 light years away, around which a faint star seemed to be circling. The star had the catalog name V404 Cygni. It was just the star Phil Charles had been looking for. Phil Child's prime weapon in the search for black holes is the massive William Herschel telescope, perched on the rim of an extinct volcano 8,000 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. OK, we're going to get the ratings loaded, so we're all set to go. 
For the last seven years, Charles has pointed the telescope towards the star V404, trying to work out just what sort of highly compact object the star must be circling. Okay, let's start the operation. Yep, looking good. The most likely candidate is a stellar mass black hole, the most common kind. According to the theory, such a black hole should weigh ten times as much as a star like our sun, but would only be about the diameter of Washington, D.C. Less common is a second type of black hole, supermassive heavyweights believed to lurk in the heart of galaxies. But to understand any black hole, you must begin with gravity, for within this darkness, gravity is in total control. Our modern quest to understand gravity and ultimately black holes was born in this room on Christmas Day 1642. Showing little promise as a farmer, the young Isaac Newton was sent up to Cambridge University. As an academic, Newton would formulate laws of physics which still form the basis of modern science. Newton was the first person to give us a really detailed mathematical understanding of one of the basic forces of nature. And, of course, it was the first great triumph of mathematical physics. He told us that the force which holds us down here on the Earth and which allows an apple to fall is the same force which holds the moon in its orbit around the Earth and makes the planets move in their courses. Newton reasoned that all matter in the universe has gravity. That it's a force that reaches out from one body to another and pulls everything inwards. The more mass an object has, the more gravity, the stronger this inwards pull. The first person to combine this notion of the inward pull of gravity with knowledge that the speed of light was finite was John Mitchell. As rector of Thornhill Church in Yorkshire and one of the 18th century's great forgotten scientists, Mitchell took Newton's view of gravity to its ultimate dark conclusion. Mitchell's giant leap was to imagine a ray of light leaving a star in the same way we think today of a rocket leaving a planet. To escape the Earth's gravitational pull entirely and travel into space, a rocket needs to push itself upwards at seven miles a second, faster than gravity tries to pull it back down. Mitchell knew nothing of rockets to the moon, but he did know that in theory, a massive star could have so much gravity that it would pull back into its clutches even rays of light traveling at 186,000 miles per second. So Mitchell worked out that if you had a body weighing about 100 million times as much the sun, light couldn't even escape from it. And he then went on to say that for that reason, maybe the most massive objects in the universe might be invisible to us. Mitchell had explained how gravity could turn a star black, but not how it could turn it into a hole. A complete understanding of the life and death of stars awaited the nuclear age.